Hey you guys, welcome back as we move on to game 3 of my semi-final match from the Origins 2.5k. Uh, once again, this is me on the left playing Dark Phoenix against Jan, uh, I, not even going to attempt your last name, on the right playing Groot. Uh, so this is game 3, so once again I'm on the play. Looks like I play a trophy area and swing in for that first wound. Once again, uh, Groot is really fighting an uphill battle by going second, uh, which is unfortunate. So, I mean, it's very fortunate for us, but yeah, so we're going to get in those first several wounds for free. And once again, he does not hit a Mantis Hunter in two. Sorry about that. <laughs> so we're showing two greens in a trophy area. Hopefully we'll get our two yellows soon or hit that keys on turn four, which is a guaranteed ramp of course. Oh, he does get the Mirage though, which is pretty good. So that's four XP on Groot. So next turn we're gonna get we're gonna have to face down a level two Groot. Having a row of card here, unfortunately. And no keys, yikes. Not great for us. Uh, I almost so I, sw I swung in to Groot and he pumped up uh, for plus four attack. I almost <laughs> took a wound there for no reason because, uh, but Dark Venus doesn't get struck back because she has a range, so. You know, you forget to how to play the game every now and then. So now we're looking down, facing down a uh, an 8-8 eight, eight Groot and another Mirage, which adds a location back to hand and then plays it again. This is a pretty favorable matchup for Dark Phoenix because it's kind of the reverse of what it usually is. Usually with Dark Phoenix, you're pretty much guaranteed to take three to four wounds early on before you really hit your stride and start to win. Um, but against Groot, that doesn't really happen because he's a 1-1 one, one, and he doesn't really play a lot of big dudes early on. So you're going to get the free wounds on Groot instead of the other way around. And usually by the time Groot gets big, you're hitting your high drops so you can deal with it. That's not the case for me right now because I didn't draw the locations that I needed because I never do. So I think I just passed there. Played a face down resource and passed. He gets a net launcher for Ghost. Let's see if he plays it. There would really be no advantage in playing it right now. You should probably just add it to his hand. Um, I mean, since I haven't ramped yet, and there's the chance that I could do it at any moment, I guess, theoretically, if I drew keys, then I guess he could net launcher uh, my Dark Phoenix. That might be the right play. But I think he just goes ahead and adds it to his hand. So that's a Madripoor, so that's one yellow. Should be at six resources, yeah. So Loki, Loki with the power-up could potentially get me there because drawing three cards is really good. Did I get the yellow? Did I get it? Did I get it? When I was looking around the room all day, it seemed like every Dark Phoenix player was opening up with two yellows except for me. <laughs> yeah, I just passed, so still missing that second yellow. And a level three group. This looks real ugly for me right now. Primeval and a cane. Uh, and cane grabs a green. 
cards. Now, we got a level 3 group, 3 nowheres, 3 greens, and a blue. This looks pretty grim. That launcher comes down. Seven counters on groups. Seventeen, seventeen group. Ghost is going to leap on over and hit Dark Phoenix, but we have the dramatic. Jungle Hunter, Dramatic Jungle Hunter. So finally we're going to get to ramp next turn because he's going to grab that yellow that we needed. Two most unfair cards in the game. Power up, draw three cards. Cannot emphasize enough how good Loki is. And net launcher on Dark Phoenix, which is probably right because he knows that I have the two yellows now. I'm showing him Adripoor and a yellow, so he's gonna lock me down. So once I finally get them, I can't do it. I think Jungle Hunter grabs me a green because I'm already showing a blue that I played for my turn. So I got a Madripoor, I got a yellow, I got a blue and a green. And we're gonna, yep. So we're gonna pay that trophy area we played on our first turn to days down that group, and then we're gonna stealth on over where we can't be struck. <clears throat> so hopefully by. Putting that net launcher on, uh, putting that net on Groot will give us some breathing room to get back into the game. He's already showing so many resources. A Thanos here would be extremely, extremely bad for us. He's thinking a lot of those. I don't think he has the Thanos, which is the obvious best play. However, once again, he'd have to hurt himself, wound himself, because his Groot is dazed. But he could take out my Jungle Hunter. Ooh, there it is. Yeah, so that's very not good. Ghost goes into Jungle Hunter. I don't think I have anything that could answer that except for a call, maybe. Power Up would do it. But no. Yep, and Thanos takes us up to four wounds, KOs my Jungle Hunter. But I am able to ready this turn. And Jan has ramped some. I have not ramped yet. But I could. I could ramp. And would would take us to quite a few resources. I can't actually see the exact number, so I don't know if I would level. Probably not yet. There's my own Thanos, and I think this time I go for the greedy play that I missed out on last turn, which is hitting his uh, Thanos with the power up. Yeah, so we're just gonna try to get maximum value off our own Thanos. Yeah. So we. Yep. So that's the exact play that I should have done last game that I failed to do. We're going to try to get there. And it pays off. He didn't have the power up. Yeah, so we got a lot of value out of our Thanos there. That's definitely what we should have done last game. I'm counting resources here to see if it's worth it to ramp. And I go ahead and go for it. Hit a location off that. Can't tell if that's a trophy area or a Madripoor, though. It's a special location, though. I'm 
And that Groot's going to come back up and become real big. Oh, looks like I ravaged his world. So I KO'd his face down resources, so he's on five now, which makes his Groot weaker and limits his options. So it looks like that was a Madripoor that I got off of. Uh, so I pitched a Madripoor from my hand, paid a Madripoor, and a blue for Ravager of Worlds. So that's a 15-15 Groot, which is big, but not nearly as big as he would have been. So it looked real ugly for us at the beginning of the game, but Ravager of Worlds is pretty much hard to lose after you resolve a Ravager of Worlds. You just need to come up with a way to bring Groot down to size. A net launcher would pretty much do it obviously. I'm thinking if I want to play Foom. Foom Primeval. If Foom were to just swing in with a power up, it would be game. Well, not quite, because I'm not showing a green for Thanos. Yeah, so we're just protecting our Thanos at all costs because what I think I'm going for here is I'm trying to net launcher down his Groot and I have keys in my hand which will let me pay that blue I'm showing for uh, for Thanos. Yeah, so I net launcher down his Groot um, and then I pitched a green from my hand to wound it because I have a million cards in my hand from all those cards I drew for Loki. So now he can't flip and I have keys in my hand. Uh, he should have added one of those basic... I, I think he might have. I think I might have just missed it. So then I drop my turn, and yeah, so then I throw down keys. So, keys target Thanos. Thanos can pay any color. I have a blue location showing, so then I just wound Groot for game. Anyway, so that was a really good match with Jan. Uh, he really got the best of me with that active camo in game two. Uh, Groot just has such a tough time going second, unfortunately, and he didn't seem to draw many mantises and all that, but it was still a really good match. Um, so yeah, so after that, we advance on to the finals, which is going to be Dark Phoenix versus, you guessed it, Dark Phoenix. Uh, so I will see you guys uh, over there. Thanks for watching.